The Diamond Lace Stitch, or DLS, looks just like a mock crochet stitch. It's got this really cool mesh, but it's actually very strong for needles. It even looks a little bit woven on the back. Depending upon the yarn and needles you use, you can have something very closed in, or even something very open woven looking like this. And this is on a flat panel, or we can do it in the round. So I'm gonna show you both today in the round and a flat panel. If you're interested in this pattern, be sure and click to join our new newsletter and you'll be seeing this in the upcoming uh, month or so. All right, join me now to make the diamond lace stitch. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. To see the stitch pattern, click on the link in the description below. All right, let's just go over a couple of things before we begin. You're going to need a multiple of two and that will get you the right cast on for either flat or in the round. We are going to work in the round first and I'm going to show you how this stitch actually kind of moves down as you go. This part right here was actually my cast on and then by the time I got to my color change you can see right here where it changed and so there can be a bit of a jog if you do some color changing so know that that happens there. Uh, but overall it has a really uh, nice clean look. If you're working with a color changing yarn uh, this works really beautifully. All right, so I want to let you know that you don't have to have a foundation row, but I have started in the round with um, making a multiple and then doing a um, one by one ribbing. So a knit purl, knit purl once around. And uh, we're gonna begin with in the round here. And that's what I've done on my sample, okay? So uh, let me slip this stitch right back over. And so just imagine you've already cast it on an even number and you've, um, done a knit purl round and you're ready to begin. You've got your stitch marker right here, ready to begin the round. This one, um, you'll see why later why this is leaning here, but this stitch here, we're just going to start by slipping it purl wise and don't do anything with it right now. Then we're going to uh, work the next stitch by knitting in the back of the loop. Okay. And then we're going to slip those two stitches back onto our left needle and then we're going to work into the back of that first stitch and knit that in the back loop. All right, that is the repeat. So let's do that again. You see how these are connected here? You're going to be slipping that stitch purlwise, knit in the back loop, slip the two stitches back over, and then I actually just let um, this first one slide over and then keep this one on. Your, your needle is set up in the correct way and then you are ready to knit in the back loop and you're done with your stitch repeat. So let's do that again. Slip one purlwise, knit in the back of the loop, slide them back over, knit one in the back loop. And be sure once you knit that one in the back loop, you don't let go of this one here. So each stitch is getting knit twice. You see how it's um, built one up and then uh, you have one more that comes back on it and it works. You skip one, you work it, you come back, you work that previous one. So the only time that it gets difficult is actually when you get back to your stitch marker. So continue going in the round, pause your video, and I'll meet you back up when I'm moving around this stitch marker here. All right, we'll see you in a minute. Okay, we still have one stitch left. If we were working in a flat panel, then we would just go ahead and knit in the back loop and that would be the end of our flat panel, but we're ready to continue going. You're actually just going to continue this stitch pattern again in the round. So you just have to work around this, um, this stitch marker here. So um, you really just wanna keep the pattern going. So you just go ahead and slip this over, okay? And then slip over the stitch marker, work that first stitch in the back loop and this will have a nice seamless, um, a seamless beginning and end to these rounds. So now we want to slip them back over one, and I got my stitch marker, and then put your needle into the front of this stitch here, and then you can go ahead and work into the back of it. So this is the last stitch before your stitch marker. All right, now you're done at the end of this round, and go ahead and move your stitch marker back over, and then begin your repeats, slipping one, working in the back of that loop, 
slipping these first two stitches over. Don't pick up your stitch marker. Work in the back of that first loop. And then you can continue. If you had to set down your needles and you need to start it right where the beginning of the stitch pattern is, you can of course pull all the way through just right where you are and then you know exactly where that stitch pattern begins. I tend to go ahead and slip this stitch over so it's not tugging so much at my work. And when I begin, I just simply look at the back of my work and see that I have already worked this stitch and this one has already been slipped. So I just know that I'm gonna work in the back of this one and we're just skipping that stitch. And you can also double check and see that you've got um, this back of that stitch here and here and here, you can see that you haven't missed any, okay? So that's how to tell where your placing is and then you can just pull your needles and set it to the side. Let's begin on the flat panel. For the flat panel, you can see how it is curling up down on the bottom here. That's because it is essentially a stock and knit. All the right side facing stitches are all knit through the back loop, therefore they are all a stock and knit uh, or twisted stock and knit stitch. They just um, are a little more spread out with this mesh and then the back are all uh, purl through the back loop. Now on the uh, round part, working in the round, I made a knit one, purl one ribbing on the edge and it makes it um, stay nice and, um, and flat. It's not curling at all. It did the same thing on my hat over here. The stuff in the round is not necessarily going to roll up, but depending upon your yarn, uh, this could be a good idea just as a prevention. So on this one, what I've done is I just have my long tail cast on, and then to make a foundation row, I have just uh, purled back across so that on the right side when I begin, I will be right facing and you can see how it has uh, curled up a little bit. So to prevent this, you can also do a one by one ribbing starting on the wrong side and um, that way this won't curl. Um, you can set up a uh, stocking knit um, or a um, garter stitch, either way to begin. It doesn't really matter. This is an even number of stitches. I'm working with a cast on of 20 stitches. So I've cast on 20, done a, a, a purl row, and now I'm working on a row one, okay? Now you can see that um, every other row is shortened. And that's really more because my gauge happens to be off. When I'm working on my right side row, I tend to be, um, for some reason, a little bit tighter on my knit stitches than I am on my purls. Um, it's a lot of times people are the opposite. Um, sometimes when I do this, I'm extremely consistent. I just haven't done it in a while. So um, it, you might want to work a, um, a swatch for a while and see how you like it. I kind of like that it's giving me this look today, so I'm just going to keep going. All right, so we're going to start with um, the same stitch that we just did. You're just going to be slipping the stitch purlwise and knitting in the back. Okay, so we knit in the back loop and now we want to pass these two stitches over and then we're going to work that first stitch knitting in the back loop. It's the same thing that we just did before. So you're going to have a slip that uh, knit in the back of that next stitch, pass the two stitches back to the other needle, and then work this stitch in the back loop. Okay, so continue doing that uh, to the last stitch and pause and I'll meet you when you have one last stitch left on your needles. See you in a moment. Okay, so I've got two stitches at the end. And let's see, I've slipped one, I'm gonna knit in the back, and I'll just continue on so you can see what I do. If you worked ahead, that's okay, just pause and watch. Okay, I've got one stitch left. I've just uh, slipped one, knit in the back loop, slide these stitches over. I'll let one drop off so that I can work in the back of that loop. All right, and now we're gonna slip this stitch here. And I actually need to work in the back of this stitch. This is my last one. So I'm going to go ahead and just put my needle back in and then knit that stitch in the back loop. Okay. 
because you need to uh, set up the, um, the finish the rest of the row and you can see how all of these down here are leaning over and that gets that last part leaning over and then you get the uh, extra stitch here. So they're all double knit. So um, one row has um, this part here and here. Okay. So uh, then we're going to turn it over and uh, you can mark your right side. So that was a right side row or row one. And then, um, so disregard your foundation row. And then we're going to begin row two, which is quite different. And uh, you may want to watch this first before you attempt it. And if you have really slippery needles on, you might just want to switch to something like a birch or a bamboo, something that will have a little bit more drag on it if you're used to something going really fast. Okay, so we're going to slip the stitch knitwise. Okay. And then we're going to go into the back of the loop and purl the back of the loop. So we're going to grab this yarn, purl one in the back loop. Okay. Don't worry about that loose yarn just yet. We're going to slip those two stitches back over. Okay. And now we're going to go back in the back of this loop, but not knitting. We're going to purl again. So I'm going to tighten up just a little bit. I'm going to purl in the back loop. All of it is in the back loop when we uh, knit or purl. So we're going to purl that. Okay. And now we're going to slip this stitch knitwise like that. And then we're going to come and purl. So we already did um, everything else when we finished here. We're, we're, we're uh, repeating now. So we slip this one knitwise. And then we're going to come to the back of this next one and we're going to purl in the back of the loop. So we go to the back of the st stitch, you're pointing this way, and then purl. So you bring your yarn in between these two needles and then you just push it back through the back here and bring it around and that gets your loop right there. And then we're going to slip those stitches back over all the way over completely and then just spin your needle to the back and go in that very first stitch and knit in the back loop okay and then let it drop off so that was just um, two repeats of that you're just going to continue that along uh, all the rest of these stitches and uh, when you get to the end it's a little bit tricky too you're having to slip one purl wise uh, or knit wise again and then you um, purl that very last stitch again in the back loop so let's do it one more time really slow we're going to slip this stitch knit wise purl in the back of the loop Slip the two stitches back to the opposite needle. Purl in the back of the loop. And repeat. So continue repeating. And again, uh, uh, if you uh, worked in the round, I would just recommend um, not stopping here just uh, go ahead and slip this one off uh, and then pull your uh, needles through and put a stopper on if you have to stop mid row that's if you have a lot of stitches i would finish out the row uh, i really wouldn't leave it hanging like this it can be very confusing to pick it back up again so go ahead and complete your row to the end i'll do that last uh, few stitches with you see you in a moment Okay, last stitch. I'm going to work in the back of that loop. Slide them over. Work in the back of the loop. Go ahead and slip uh, knitwise. Set it back up on your other needle. And then uh, purl in the back of that loop. And that is the uh, row two.
And so you're back on the right side and you would just continue. And look, <laughs> mine actually got a little bit more consistent here. So it's just really um, as often as you do it. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed our tutorial for the Diamond Lace Stitch DLS. If you'd like to check out the Boyfriend hat, that's what this pattern is, in the coming weeks, be sure and write Boyfriend down below. And also click on our website link to join our newsletter so you get updates when we have patterns come out as well as uh, new videos. And uh, as always, our VIP members get the patterns 24 hours in advance before we release them out on the blog and on the video. All right, thank you so much for joining me at Good Knit Kisses. Have a great day and happy knitting and crochet. Bye everyone. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.